Hello, y'all. Today we get to learn about the greatest common factor. And you know what? It is great because it's really useful. What is it? Well, that's the first question we'll answer today. We'll also figure out how we find it and why we need it. So let's get started. The greatest common factor. Some people also call it the highest common factor, but we'll just stick to greatest common factor for now. Well, let's break it down word by word. Greatest common factor, otherwise known as the GCF. Say we have two numbers, 28 and 42. If I wanna find the greatest common factor, what I'm really looking for is the biggest number that both 28 and 42 can be divided by. I know, it does sound a bit confusing. Let me show you what I mean. I wanna find the greatest common factor of 28 and 42. So let's just look at 28 first. To start, I wanna list the factors or what numbers divide into 28. I always start with one and go up from there. So does one go into 28? Of course, it goes in 28 times. What about two? Yep, two times 14 is 28. How about three? Does three go into 28? No. What about four? Yes, four times seven is 28. Can we squeeze in some more? How about five? No, 28 can't be divided by five. What about six? Nope. Seven? Well, yeah, but it's already there, which means we're finished. We found all the factors of 28. Let's do the same with 42 now. Does one go into 42? Of course, 42 times. How about two? Yep, 21 times. Three? Yes, again. Three times 14 is 42. How about four? Nope. How about five? No. Six? Oh yeah, six times seven is 42. And we've met in the middle, so we're finished. We've listed the factors of 28 and the factors of 42. To find the greatest common factor, we just need to compare the two lists to find the biggest that they both have in common. So they both have a one, they both have a two, and they both have a seven in common. But 14 is the biggest. So 14 is the greatest common factor. Yeah, I know, so what? Well, let's say that those two numbers, 28 and 42, are in a fraction. See, that's a big, hairy fraction. We can use our greatest common factor, um, excuse me, ah, thank you. We can use our greatest common factor of 14 to clean this up a bit. Watch. 14 goes into 28 two times. So 28 is really two times 14, right? Good. And 14 goes into 42 three times. So 42 is just three times 14. Still good? Fantastic. Now we can just cancel out the 14s. Oh wait, why can you just cancel those out? Mm, good question. Let's look at just the 14s for a second. 14 divided by 14, or anything else divided by itself, is just one. And if we take 2 thirds and multiply it times one, we just get 2 thirds again because any number times one is just that same number. It's called the identity property of multiplication. You still following? Very good. If we cancel out the 14s, that means that our big hairy fraction has just been made so much more simple. Let's try another one. This time we'll find the greatest common factor of 18 and 45. 18 first, and I'm gonna go a bit faster this time. Does one go into 18? Of course, 18 times. And we've got two times nine, three times six, and we're done. 
How about 45? Okay, even faster. The factors of 45 are 1 and 45, 3 and 15, 5 and 9. So once again, we have a couple common factors here, but what's the biggest? 9. 9 is the greatest common factor of 18 and 45. And if we have one of those big fractions again, we can simplify it. 18 is just 2 times 9. 45 is 5 times 9. Cross out the 9s and voila! 18 over 45 simplifies to 2 fifths. We're almost finished. I just want to show you one more thing. We already know that the greatest common factor of 18 and 45 is 9. But what if we have three numbers that we need to find the greatest common factor for? For example, what's the greatest common factor of 18, 45, and 30? Well, no problem. We'll just squeeze in another line. We already know the factors of 18 and 45, so let's just list them for 30 as well. We've got 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, 5 and 6. And now compare the lists, and it looks like this time the greatest common factor is 3. It's still pretty easy, even with another number added. And that's it for today. We learned all about the greatest common factor, how to find it, and why we need it. So it's your turn now. Have fun with it.